Hey everyone, and welcome to this demo of Evidence 111. This game was supposed to come out on the 15th, but I was I was checking the App Store and it appears to be in the iOS App Store. I don't know if it's available for Android quite yet, but as soon as it is and there are links, I will be sure to be providing links to this content as well. Um, for the, for those of you that don't know, this is an um, it's a detective crime story. Oh, is it raining? Yep, it sure is raining. All right. Um, yeah, this is a crime detective story, and I do apologize if you can hear stuff in the background. Um. Basically, you're playing as, uh, I think uh, the character's name is Alice Wells, and it's a choice-based adventure. So let's go ahead and get into this. Now, just uh, to say, I have played this before. The developer sent me a pre-production version, uh, so I'm going to be playing this again. Uh, but this time I will be playing the version that is available for everyone to play. So let's go ahead Evidence 111. and load the game and get started. Evidence 111, direct touch area. And it should come up here in just a second. Welcome to the interactive audio story Evidence Number 111. You must turn off the talkback or voiceover function for the application to work properly. To launch the game with the assistance for the visually impaired, swipe right on your device screen. To start without the assistance, swipe left. You can change the settings at any time in the main menu. To repeat the help, swipe up with two fingers. Right, so I'm going to swipe to the right. Um, you don't have to turn off... Well, okay, I don't know about TalkBack, uh, but I'm running this on iOS. You do not have to turn off... Voiceover, not on iOS. So I'm gonna swipe one finger right. Main menu. You'll start a new game by swiping right. To load a game you have previously started, swipe left. By swiping up, you can turn the help for the visually impaired on or off. By swiping down on the screen, you can purchase the full game. You can exit the game in the same way you exit any other application on your device. To activate the help, swipe up with two fingers on your screen at any time during the game. So, this game does have a demo. I'm going to actually purchase the game. Uh, but the demo lets you play the first, oh, I'd say probably 20 minutes, maybe half an hour. You are now on the screen that allows you to purchase the full game. You can purchase the full game by swiping right for $4.99 US or the equivalent in your local currency. The payment is processed as a regular in-app purchase. To finish the purchase, you need to activate the talkback or voiceover function. By swiping left, you return to the main menu. If right. you own an iOS device, you can restore the already purchased game by swiping down. You can repeat the help by swiping up with two fingers. App Store, heading, close, image, close, image, evidence 111, full story. Evidence 111, in-app purchase, $4.99, one-time charge. Account, Christopher, confirm with side button. All right, so I'm gonna click the side button twice. Face ID. Done. Evidence 111. Direct touch area alert. You're all set. Your purchase was successful. Okay, button. Main Direct menu. touch area. All right. You'll start a new game by swiping right. To load a game you have previously started, swipe left. By swiping up, you can turn the help for the visually impaired on or off. By swiping down on the screen, you can purchase the full game. You can exit the game in the same way you exit any other application on your device. To activate right. the help, swipe up with two fingers on your screen at any time during the game. So, let's begin the story. Evidence number 111 is an interactive audio story. You will only see basic controls on your display without any graphics. You can pause the game at any time by swiping two fingers down the screen. By swiping two fingers to the right, you can skip to the next part of the game. And by swiping to the left, you repeat the part of the game you're in right now. By swiping up, you will activate the help that will remind you how to use the controls. 
your progress in the game is saved automatically. For the best experience, put on your headphones, close your eyes, and immerse yourself in the mystery of evidence number 111. In certain moments, the story will pause and you will be able to decide how your character, Constable Alice Wells, will act or react. You will confirm your decision by swiping your fingers on the screen. If you want to choose the first option and report to the radio, swipe to the right. If you want to choose the second option and play a joke on the woman on the radio, swipe left. If you want Alice to repeat all the options, swipe up. Shall I report to Judy or play a joke on her? Right, so now the game pauses and you can make choices. I can swipe up, as he said, with a finger. Shall I report to Judy or play a joke on her? So, choice number one is always to the right, choice number two is always left, and there is a third choice which will be explained shortly. Now, I've already played this, I'm going to try to choose different choices that I didn't make the last time I played. So, let's do... Hang on a second. Let me pause the recording. Okay, I do apologize for the background noise. I can't really control that. You'll just have to bear with me. Uh, so I'm going to swipe to the left. Judy, this is your conscience. Why did you eat Alice's sandwich from the fridge? Why? She had her name on it. Her name! <laughs> Is that you, Alice? What are you doing? What the hell are you thinking? Cut the act and tell me where you are. Judy sounds upset. I'm at a petrol station around 25 miles from town. Judy, is something happening? Listen to me carefully. I'm sending Wilson and Bowers over to you. I need you guys to close the road down and check everyone who tries to go into town. Understand? If anyone tries to drive through, you will stop them, no matter what. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of your decisions result directly from the situation that you have just heard. These are usually the moments when other characters require a clear yes or no answer from you. Swipe your finger to the right if yes, you understand what Judy is asking from you, or if the answer is no, you do not understand the instructions and would like Judy to repeat them, swipe to the left. The positions of yes to the right and no to the left remain the same throughout the whole game. Do I understand what Judy wants? I'll do no. Sorry, I didn't hear you well. What is it that you wanted? You close the road down and stop everyone who comes near. Nobody can go into town. Do you copy? Yes, Judy. Copy that. Alice, this is really important. Am I saying it's not? Then repeat what I want from you. Am I a child or something? Alice! In certain situations, Alice will be able to choose from three options. In such cases, you will pick the third option by swiping down the screen. The positions of the first and second options remain unchanged. Shall I repeat the orders to Judy or not answer at all? Or maybe I should ask what's going on. Hmm, let's not answer at all. So, repeat the orders. Alice! I wonder what's happened. In Farnham, nothing really happens here. That must have been the one I'm supposed to stop. I can't let him get away! Now you know everything you need to uncover the mystery of evidence number 111. However, be cautious about your decisions. How the story unfolds is solely up to you. I need to go after him. Damn, they're fast. What kind of a car is that? I can't keep up with him. Shall I call for backup or try to catch him alone? Let's say no and catch him alone, because I did the other one before. So I will swipe to the left. I can't do two things at once, otherwise he'll get away. I'm on my own. How is he driving so fast? I can't catch him in this piece of garbage, I can barely see him. What the hell? Ten years later.
Sorry. Another song. A flood emergency has been announced in seven locations. <sighs> if you can, stay inside and stay safe. And now we have another caller who would like us to play a song for them. Who do I have on the line? This is Alice. Hello, Alice. Where are you calling us from? Uh, from work. And what do you do for a living? Shall I tell him I'm a police officer? I'm going to say no. It doesn't matter what I do for a living. Ooh, a lady with a secret. I like that. And what would you like us to play for you? <sighs> I don't really care. What's wrong? Are you not feeling well? I've got a headache, but I have some pills here. I just haven't taken them yet. Oh, in that case, I hope you feel better soon. And I would like to dedicate our next song not only to the mysterious Alice, oh, but also God. to drivers, doctors, and everyone else who has to be at work during this rainy night. Oh, for God's sake. Shall I pick it up? Let's not do that and see what happens. Wait. Keep on ringing. I'm not doing anything tonight. You have reached Chief Inspector Alice Wells, who is currently unavailable. Please leave a message after the tone. Miss Wells. I know you are there. You are on duty tonight. Please pick up the phone. It is in your own interest. What the? What's this nonsense? Shall I pick it up? Nope. Oh, please keep talking. Someone like you calls every day. Shall I pick it up? Nope. I'm not letting anyone blackmail me. Especially not a lunatic on the phone. Just carry on talking as you please. I'm not picking this up. Considering what I know, your behavior does not surprise me at all. Yet it is disappointing. If you do not want to talk to me, just listen to me at least. I am sure you are aware of what would happen if anyone found out about that little boy. Where has this person found out about this? No one was there that night. Luckily for you, I am willing to keep quiet about your wrongdoing. All I need is one small thing. <laughs> there is an evidence room at your police station, and you, as the chief inspector, have a key to this room. What? If you do not want me to call all the newspapers and radio stations in Britain, you will use the key to unlock that room and take something from there. What's he talking about? A small thing. A sealed brown envelope <laughs> which is registered as evidence number 111. Without opening 
take the envelope, you will bring it to the Harbor Watch Inn on Cork Island near Casco Bay tomorrow evening. Oh my god. Please write it down so that you will not forget. You will check in to okay. number five. You will receive mm. further instructions there. Number five. <laughs> you bastard. I am deeply sorry that you do not wish to speak to me, but I believe you will take my advice. I am very much looking forward to our meeting. Until then, I will keep watching you closely. That can't be possible. After so many years. Who could have seen me back then? I guess all I can do is listen. I should go get their envelope now that the station is still not busy. But maybe I should get my stuff first. I won't have much time for that later. Should I get the envelope or pack my stuff? Yeah, we'll say pack your stuff. So I'll swipe to the right. I'd better go now before the station gets too busy. A brown envelope. Evidence number 111. I don't even remember what could be in there. Oh, whoops. But who has been able to find out what happened that night? After 10 years. Wait. I remember that little boy very well. He had blonde hair. It was shiny even in the dark. I'd better go. No, it's okay. I need to find out exactly where Harbour Watch Inn is. Play by Ears presents Zoe Robbins. Rosamond Pike, Mike Bodie, Richard Reed, Kenny Blythe, Abigail Rice, Jamie Marshall, Atom Uniac, Rebecca Reesness. Paul Coltofiano, Michael Pitton, and James Bowman. In the interactive audio story, Evidence Number 111. Here I am. Harbour Watch Inn. The typical three-story Victorian house. It's like a picturesque mansion on a remote island. I would even consider holidaying here, but not for this weather. I should go inside. The rain's getting stronger. bigger from the outside and it doesn't look that nice inside musty smell tacky modern sofas greetings and... ma'am welcome to the harbor watch inn may i help you what oh m no thank you oh, you look so lost in your thoughts do you have a reservation and you are my name is ethel ethel washington i'm a receptionist here i see is something wrong done? no 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 um sorry i'm <laughs> I'm fine. You're lucky you even made it here, dear. The ferry was close to not even getting to the island at all. But let's get you warmed up by the fireplace now, shall we? Here, let me take your coat and bags. No. Uh, I mean, don't worry about it. I can, I can handle it. Well, as you wish. Once you would like to check in, I'll be behind the desk over there. There is no way I'm leaving this suitcase. Should I check in? Or should I first take a look around? So I meant to choose the other choice at the last uh, choice thing there. So I'm sorry for that. But let's let's choose to check in. May I check in? I'll be with you in a second, darling. Just let me finish writing this. So, where do we have it? Aha, here. Um, please write your name here. 
your occupation here, the length of stay. Which room have you booked with us? Number five. But, um, you know, um, Mr. Broderick, are you going to sleep? It's about time, Mrs. Washington. I'm an old man, you know. Oh, excuse me, miss. Uh, we haven't met, have we? Good evening. I am Detective Broderick, Glasgow Police Department. And you, according to this book, are a... Oh, well, well. Chief Inspector Alice Wells. Y yes. Pleased to meet you. The pleasure is all mine, colleague. Shame it's so late, but tomorrow morning we definitely need to have a little chat. Have a good night. Sweetheart, I'm so sorry about that, but we've got a slight inconvenience here. What kind of inconvenience? It's about your room. It's currently unavailable. Uh, unavailable? Yeah. Sorry about that. Is someone else staying there? Well, yes. And no. I excuse me, but what does that mean? Yes and no? Ma'am, you know, Reverend McCarthy arrived unexpectedly this morning, all the way from the United States. Well, so? <laughs> There's no easy way to say this, but... Uh... The Reverend has arrived because of your room. What? Reverend McCarthy is... He's one of the biggest experts on the supernatural in the whole country. Right now, he's investigating your room. I've given him the keys. Nobody else is allowed in the room. <laughs> in fact, nobody else can. The spare key's gone missing. <sighs> Miss Washington... If you're trying to scare me with spooky stories, it's... You have nothing to worry about. Everything is perfectly fine. It's just... Nothing. Never mind. We will get a different room ready for you, dear. A different room? But the person on the phone specifically said room number five. Shall I argue with Miss Washington? I'm gonna say no. Miss Washington. Call me Ethel, darling. I want you to know that I don't like this. If you believe in ghosts, well, that's, that's your business. I am so incredibly sorry. But I won't be arguing because of a room number. Thank you very much. If there's anything we can do for you... Hmm? Pardon the noise. The Keswells are full of energy. You know, a young family. Do they argue a lot? Sometimes. But don't worry, your new room will be perfectly quiet. You will be one floor above them. What do you think of them? Mr Keswell is a bit grumpy, but he's a famous writer. And what about his wife? Supposedly, she's a lady of leisure. <laughs> you know, she inherited a lot of money from her parents. So she can afford it. Oh, sorry. Shouldn't be talking about this. Could I have my keys, please? <clears throat> I'm ready to go to bed tonight. Right away, darling. Room number... Actually, it doesn't have a number. We usually don't offer this room to our guests. It used to be a staff bedroom. But no worries, it is spotless. It's on the second floor and very quiet there. That is because the other guests are all on the first floor. Uh, that sounds lovely. Shall I call someone to help with your luggage, darling? Unfortunately, we are understaffed tonight, but our chef, Mr Rogers, will gladly assist you. That's all right. I can handle it myself. Are you sure? It's not a problem. I will call Tom and... No, I can handle it myself. As you wish, my dear. The second floor, at the end of the hallway. I hope you will enjoy your stay with us. For sure. Is this where I'm supposed to sleep? Do they even dust in here? <laughs> if this hotel is haunted, it's this room for sure. Just relax, Alice. It's all going to be fine. 
I'll hand over that damn evidence and be back home tomorrow. Everything's going to be all right. No one will ever find out. And what was I supposed to do back then? I wouldn't have been able to help that child anyway. Ugh. Ugh. Not my head again. Maybe I'll take a shower. Oh, damn it. I haven't brought my painkillers. Maybe they'll have some hair. No. Oh. Nothing. <laughs> of course, there's nothing. <sighs> By the bed, on the bedside table, maybe in the closet. It looks so creepy. <sighs> Locked? <sighs> Where am I supposed to put my coat? Maybe I could pry open the closet. The lock looks easy enough. Should I do it? I'll say no. Again, I'm trying to choose choices I didn't choose before because I want to see how this um, differs. So the thing with this game is there is a bunch of combinations. or um, There are a bunch of combinations of choices and you can choose to play however you would like. So the gameplay I'll be doing, I will be demoing, will definitely not be the c complete game. So I would encourage you to check this out if you actually like it. So I'm gonna choose no. I'll leave it be. I better have a shower. Such a strange place for a meeting. Weird people, the storm, ghosts. If this person thinks they're going to scare me. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have stolen that evidence. If anyone finds out. What was that? Anyone there? Hello? Uh, must have been the wind. Or the squeaky floor. Old houses make a lot of creepy noises anyway. Even without the ghost stories. Maybe I should check it out. But I'd rather take a shower. Mm, so if they think you s swipe to the right, she'll check it out. If not, she'll take a shower. Let's go to the right. What the hell am I doing? Am I really that paranoid? If anyone saw me like this, I should get dressed. Oh! What is this doing here? The dust on the floor has been swept. It seems like there's something written here. The roof will come to light. That doesn't make any sense. Unless it's truth. I can see it now. It's all shaky and uneven as if an elderly person wrote that. Or a child? <laughs> this can't be a coincidence. But how did they get into my room? Or... What the hell? Should I check what's going on? Or should I ignore it? No, just ignore it. No. No. I can't deal with anyone else's problems right now. Whatever's happening down there, it's not my business. <sighs> Mrs. Williams, oh. excuse me. It's really nice that you've knocked, but shouldn't you wait until I've let you in? I know. I'm, I'm very sorry, but it's urgent. I need you to come with me. Something's happened. The Keswell's son... The Keswell's son got lost. We need your help. Please. Okay. Thank you. Let's go. Now this is where the demo would end. But it should continue.
because I bought the full version. Everyone, please calm down. We are here. Please, Miss Wells, huh? help me. Please. Adele, calm down. We'll sort it all out. No, Hugo is gone. Something must have happened to him. I just know. Maybe he's just hiding somewhere. No, he wouldn't do that. Please, Miss Wells, you're a police officer. Please find him. Please do something. Wait. Well, oh, that's that's bugged. I think this is supposed to ask if you want to help him or not. That's a bug. Um, I'm going to swipe to the left for no, because I think this is asking if you're going to help her or not. Don't worry, Mrs. Caswell. I'm sure your son is okay. I just wish I could believe you. But you'll find him. Right? Me? Oh, please, you have to fight him. You have to help us. But I... Uh, but, but, but what? If I go after the boy, I'd risk exposing myself. But what if something's really happened to him? Should I help? Okay, I think that was an, a different choice. Yeah, that didn't work properly. Let's choose no again. But... But what? You're a police officer. You have to help me. Miss Wells, I know you're on holiday. But the Caswells are desperate. <sighs> okay, then. <laughs> Ethel, is it possible that the boy got out somehow? That's impossible. I've been at reception the whole evening. He didn't pass through there. In that case, he must still be at the hotel. Unfortunately, I guess you're right. Unfortunately? Miss Wells, do you remember why we had to check you into a different room? What do you mean? Of course, I think that Hugo is probably just hiding somewhere. But please don't start with your ghost stories. <laughs> Why is everyone just standing there? Please do something! Adele, calm down. He might be suffering somewhere while you're all just talking. Calm down. Hugo, darling, where are you? Hugo, where are you? Can somebody do something? Hugo! Do not yell, uh, Mrs. Kessel. Hugo! He obviously does oh, not Oh, just hear. leave me alone! I need to fight him. Don't just stand there staring. Do something. I need to calm Mrs. Caswell down. Gently or quickly. We'll say quickly. You go. You go. Mrs. Caswell. <laughs> Mrs. Caswell. <laughs> oh! How dare you lay a hand on my wife? Are you okay, Mrs. Caswell? Yes. Please forgive me, but I need you to stay calm. Yes. Now, please go back to your room and your husband, too. The same applies to you, Reverend. As you wish. Ethel, please lock the entrance to the hotel and inform the staff. Right away, love. Hugo will probably show up eventually and will come looking for you in your room. So don't leave the room under any circumstances. But, uh... Is that clear? Yes. I'll personally check all the rooms and other areas in the hotel. Thank you. <laughs> That's okay. It's my job after all. Let's see here. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay. Ethel has locked the entrance. All the guests are in their rooms. And I'm here. I guess I can forget about quietly getting out of here tomorrow without anyone remembering me. What have I got myself into? If only my head didn't hurt so much. There are three rooms on this floor. I'm guessing by the crying, the Kessels must be checked into room number one. The remaining rooms must be where the Reverend and the detective are staying. But which is which? Has any of this got something to do with why I'm here? I can't imagine the drunk reverend or the weepy mother inviting me here. But if it's neither of them, then who is it? I should check on the Kessels first. Find out how it all started. Oh. A 
That doesn't sound pleasant. I should probably leave them alone and not just stand here and eavesdrop. But who knows what else I can find out about. Should I knock on the door or just listen for a while? Let's just go ahead and knock. I'm sorry to disturb you. And, Mrs. Keswell, I want to apologize for hitting you earlier. Don't worry about it. I've been through worse. Can't you leave us alone now? Have you found him? D do you know anything? I'm sorry. Not yet. I need to ask you a few questions if you don't mind. <clears throat> yes. Of course. Adele, but... Oh, Richard. Please, go on. When and where was the last time you saw your son? How original. Richard, stop it. Uh, about an hour ago, um, maybe maybe one and a half, he was sitting on the bed here reading, and I went to have a shower, and I, I couldn't have been gone long, maybe 10, 15 minutes, but when I came out of the bathroom, he was gone. And where were you at that time, Mr. Keswell? Down in the lobby. Sitting at the bar. Is it possible that Hugo went downstairs to look for you? I would have seen him if he'd been there. Oh, he wouldn't have just left the room like that. So how come he's not here? Just relax. <laughs> relax. Mrs. Caswell, you said that Hugo had been reading before you left. Yes, he was just sitting here on the bed reading. Oh, my poor boy. He must be a very smart boy if he can read already. How old is he? Five? Six. He, he turned six a few days ago. This holiday was supposed to be a gift for him as well. I taught him how to read when he was four. He didn't want to. Couldn't focus. But he finally got the hang of it. That's amazing. <laughs> what does he like to read? Fairy tales and fantasy. He's still slow, but you know, he's still so small. He brought Alice in Wonderland here with him. <clears throat> really? With all due respect, couldn't you just leave us the hell alone? Richard, she's trying to help us. By browsing through the books. What's the point of that? Wouldn't you like to know what we had for breakfast or something else that's so important? Should I keep questioning the father or the mother? Let's do the mothers if I swiped left. Mrs. Keswell, do you think the books could be connected with Hugo's disappearance somehow? In what way? He might have gone on an adventure to an unexplored part of the hotel. <laughs> no, 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 there's no way. Hugo is a, s a sensible, calm child. He, he, I've, I've told him many times that the real world is nothing like the one in the books and, and <laughs> that he has to be careful. What will you tell me what's so funny? <laughs> Jesus, the boy likes fairy tales, just like any other kid his age. I have no idea what we're talking about here. Stop it. It's all Stop nonsense. It. Why do you think that? What? Why do you think it's all nonsense? Miss Wells knows what she's doing. Nothing's happened. If it was serious, I'd call the real police. Oh, now you're crossing the line. Hugo's probably just sitting somewhere and stuffing himself with candy. What do you even know about him? You don't even care about him. And you don't care about anything else. I've had enough. Should I intervene or leave? Nah, no, just leave. <sighs> well, excuse me, but he's I my don't child. Have time but for you this. won't leave him alone for even a second. And I leave him alone this one time, and this is how it ends. I guess I won't find out anything interesting from the Keswells. But where to now? Room number two or three? Should I go to room number two or three? <clears throat> Let's say three. Let's try door number three. I've always liked three better than two. <clears throat> There's rosary beads hanging on the doorknob. That must be the Reverend's room. That makes sense. He's right below room number five, which is supposedly haunted. What's he doing in there? Maybe he's praying? It sounds weird. Should I knock or listen to him for a while? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Let's say knock. Let's find out who this reverend really is. Good evening. Good evening. We have not officially met, have we? Reverend Timothy McCarthy. Call me Reverend. Ellis Wells. Nice to meet you. 
Please, come on in. Unfortunately, I do not have any snacks here, but uh, may I offer you a drink? No, thank you. I can't. I see. It is the lost boy, is it not? <coughs> it is a terrible suffering indeed. I pray that you find him as soon as possible. Would you mind if I continued packing? Is he going somewhere? Should I ask him? Nah, yeah, just don't. <clears throat> I'd say no. That's okay. Carry on packing. Thank you. Thank you very much. I apologize. I do not have enough time to give you my full attention. But uh, you have not come in here for a drink and a few kind words, have you? No. Listen. Do you really think it's haunted here? Well, uh... I've not yet heard about a boogeyman kidnapping a child. Alice, dear, I may not be that old, but I have seen enough in my lifetime. Things that you would not believe, even if I were trying to persuade you for hours. But for this, there will undoubtedly be an entirely secular explanation. A curious boy has set off to explore the hotel. He probably doesn't even know that somebody's looking for him. You will see. He will soon reappear. Are you sure? Absolutely. Ethel, the receptionist, didn't seem as confident as you do. <laughs> oh, Ethel, you know, she has been working here for a long time, and she is worried about what is going on here. She even asked for a blessing. She is a charming woman, but uh, somewhat fearful. So I don't have to be scared of seeing a ghost in the room, then? <laughs> You do not have to be scared at all, but I cannot promise you that you will not see one. But now, please, do not think that I want to rush you, but... Uh... We both have a lot to do here. Well, yes. Goodbye, Reverend. May God be with you. I haven't talked to Detective Broderick yet. Who knows? Maybe you could help with the search. What's that sound? Has he fallen asleep? It wasn't me. Don't take photos of Is he sleep talking? Go away. I wonder what he's dreaming about. Should I knock or let him sleep? Alright, I'm gonna go through this last cutscene here and then I'll call this end the end of part one. <sighs> There's no way I can wake him. I'll go check the second floor in the meantime. Or, well, let's see. So, except for the room that I'm staying in, there are two other rooms. The mysterious and locked room number five, and another room that I know nothing about. Where should I go? To the locked room number five, or to the other room? Let's go to the locked room. Room number five, the cursed room, full of ghosts and boogeymen, in desperate need of an exorcism. <laughs> well, I guess there is something intriguing about it. Maybe a curious little boy would want to see a ghost and go inside. Or was he afraid of the room and wanted to get as far away from it as possible? <laughs> okay, ghost room, bring it on. Locked. What a surprise. And I can't just pry it open. The lock looks sturdy and I look too suspicious already. I don't think Hugo is here. Unless he's managed to get inside another way. But how? The child's gone missing. I don't have time to tiptoe around and waste my time with ghost stories. I need the keys, but the Reverend has them. So off to the Reverend. Mr. McCarthy? Mr. McCarthy, hello? Locked. He must have left while I was upstairs. He was packing before. I hope 
hope he's not leaving after all. Maybe I can still catch up with him in the lobby. Miss Wells, what are you still doing here? Where are you going? Well, Mr. McCarthy isn't in his room, and, and I have to find him. Oh, I see. Are you really drinking now? And why not? A child's gone missing here. Oh, this... I could use your help. Well, but... But what? I'm just in the middle of another case. More complicated, and it requires my utmost concentration. Another case? Aren't you on vacation? Some crimes can never be dropped. You can do this on your own, Miss Wells. Are you serious? Please. Some kid is playing hide-and-seek with his parents. He has nowhere to go and nothing can happen to him here. Are you willing to take that chance? Hmm. No. I guess you're right. We should do something, just oh. to be sure. Thank you. A missing child is kind of a big deal, isn't it? <sighs> Absolutely. That's a big deal, an important one. Well, yes. I think the kidnapper... A kidnapper? Well, we always need to take the worst scenario into account. Mm. All of a sudden? Don't think about the Reverend. After all, he's a man of faith and a drunk. He wouldn't kidnap a child. <clears throat> Trust me. We should speak to the chef. But I need to get into the locked room. But why? You've said it yourself, that it's locked. Actually, you're right. See? So calm down and come to the kitchen with me. But... No but. Let's go. Could I at least stop by my room? To the kitchen! Broderick! Broderick! <sighs> I've got more important things to do than look after him. But what if he does something stupid? And what if that chef really knows something about the boy? Should I follow him to the kitchen or go to my room? Alright, I'm going to end part one here and pick back up right from where I left off in part two.